Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration, collaboration can inspire community, and communities create social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So today's guest is Gwyneth James. She's from Peterborough, Ontario. She's the president of the Women's Business Network in Peterborough. She's also a partner in Cody and James. Uh, she's a certified general accountant who isn't just in love with numbers. And I think you're going to see that come through in her tone of voice and her passion and her intention. It's really quite wonderful. She's going to talk about being hooked on volunteerism and she's going to make a distinction between an intake in a give mode and how it was directly linked to her upbringing and her parents and so on and this whole idea of I guess paying it forward frankly we didn't actually get into that but she's going to talk a lot about how she manages to juggle so many different things and actually still get a whole lot done and maybe just a little bit in, of, of insight into why she's not a great administrator I think you're going to really enjoy this and it's uh, it's a fun interview and it's um, coming up uh, in June the 3rd I'm actually going to be speaking at an event in Peterborough uh, for the Women's Business Network. Uh, DavidPeckLive.com. We're close to about 95 interviews online. Check us out there. Real Change is incremental, is now available live. We'll talk soon. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We are joined by uh, uh, a guest out of Peterborough today, Peterborough, Ontario. Gwyneth James is joining us from Cody and James. It's an accounting firm in the area. And she's also the president of the Women's Business Network. And we're going to talk, I think, probably about volunteering. We're going to talk about maybe numbers and uh, a few other things. Uh, Gwyneth, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome. So, okay, I'm going to right out of the gate, I'm going to say, you know, I hardly know you. And accountants generally are not, in my world, ex passionate people. Or at least they don't come across that way, Gwyneth. How's this? So how's, I'm, I'm risking offending you right out of the gate here, live yes. on air. <laughs> um, I don't get that sense from you at all. Uh, I, I, I know a little bit about you from, through the WBN and through your LinkedIn profile and so on, and we're going to be working together on June the 3rd in Peterborough at an event. Tell me if that's kind of uh, a cliche and, and, and not for good reason. Well, it is a cliche, and I can't say it's completely undeserved, but I just happen to be a rather unusual accountant. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've been told that before. I um, I do get passionate about things, particularly about this community and about helping small businesses, and I am very outgoing, and that's just the way I run my, my business. I really enjoy being able to help people as much as I can. So I want to talk about the whole idea of multitasking and juggling balls and so on in a couple of minutes because I think that's going to become very clear for most of the listeners here today. But, but um, you've got to look, clearly have a lot of interests, and you, uh, from what you've been telling me earlier, you're on uh, several boards. Um, you, you, uh, a direct quote on on Cody and James's website. You're a, a quote a strong believer in giving back to the community. Um, how how is a numbers person? How is somebody that seems to be all about charts and graphs and 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 um, you know, tax season. Mm -hmm. Just um, after that. Yeah. Where? How did you get pulled into this whole idea of giving back? Well, I guess really it's from my parents, who also did a fair amount of, and still do, believe it or not, at seventy-eight and ninety, a fair amount of wow. volunteering. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. And it's kept them very intellectually sharp and hmm. active and interesting to be around. So uh, I, I saw that. I remember keenly it, when my kids were small, getting frustrated because I had no time, in, you know, in addition to them and full-time job at the time, to do anything of a volunteer nature. And my mom just said, calm down, your time will come. She says, right now you're in take mode, and pretty soon you'll be in give mode and, uh, you know, just wait. And sure enough, a few years later, when the kids were a little bit more settled and my job was a bit more settled, I joined the United Way board. And that was the first of a lot of different boards. And I just got kind of hooked on it because of so many interesting people mm. you meet and mm. so many linkages you can make between people that you meet and uh, that can help your friends and your fellow business people and 
and get, make Peterborough a better place, which means, I mean, it's good for me and it's good for my family. Tell me a little bit more about that intake versus the give mode. That's pretty interesting. I don't, I've, you know, I've, I've taught in international development for years, and I come across people who are interested in giving back. You know, this whole sort of social justice movement, the whole mm-hmm. social innovation movement. That's kind of the world I live in. But I don't hear people talk about it uh, intake versus give uh, mode too often, as if there's a time in your life when you're going to be, you know, uh, researching, you're going to be reading, you're going to be taking it in, you're going to raise a family, and then at some point it's time to to give back to your culture, your society, your That's, friends, and so on. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what my mom said, and mm. and she even I mean you've, uh, everybody's heard of that uh, poem to everything there is a season and right. a season under the sun, and so that's what I believe that when your kids are young, you give everything to them, and you need help from friends and family because there's lots that you have to fit into a, a day, but as they get older and you need to let them then get their own feet under them then you have some time to be able to give back to some of those younger people who now are overwhelmed with their families or older people who desperately need to have some supports and things like that. So it's just, and if you don't do that, then what's going to happen to your society if there aren't people willing to step up and and share some of what they've learned and share some of the time that they now have? I mean, great Greek proverb I've put uh, in an article I wrote a, a society grows strong when old men uh, plant trees whose shade they will never see. Mm, it's such a great quote. I use I the quote it. myself. It's actually, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, sit under shade whose, uh, what is it, sit under a tree whose shade you... Uh, yeah, they, they plant trees whose shade they will never sit in. Will never, never sit in themselves, yeah, so the whole idea of, of, of planting seeds for others. Yeah. And I think I think teachers, I think writers, I think artists, and so on, and parent, parents. Frankly, I mean that's what that, that's good leaders. You know, politicians. Mm-hmm. That's really what it's all about. Yeah, that was a, a Canadian farmer, I believe. Oh, uh, really? Nelson. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, Nelson Anderson. I don't know if that's his name, but uh, yeah. I thought I, it was I, an old Greek proverb, but about yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Trust a Canadian farmer to rip off a Greek philosopher, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or or yeah, a Greek but, poet, yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's it's wonderful, and maybe in in when I put up the blurb on the site on uh, for the podcast, maybe I can try to track it down and I'll, I'll stick it up there. I good. just, I you know, Gwyneth, I'm just kind of interested in that because because you know I, I'm 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 I live in a in a in a community where we've got these really small backyards and six foot fences, and I love to talk about this uh, with people and so on. And this, you know, we drive into our garage, and especially in the winter time when mm-hmm. it's dark in the morning and dark in the evening, you don't sort of hang out with your neighbors. You don't really. I mean, I don't really need my neighbors. No. You know what I mean? It's it's really quite tragic, and I just wonder. You know, you live in Peterborough. You live in a smaller culture uh, outside of the city, several hours out of, of Toronto. Do you think? that's had anything to do with it. So clearly you you grew up with this value and ethic that was concerned about others and giving back. Mm -hmm. Do you think living in a community like Peterborough has sort of um, nurtured that? It probably has because, I mean, just a secret between you and me, when you give back, you usually get more than you give. And I want to ask you more about that as well. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I mean, I... I think it's a combination of the two. A family that felt very strongly that you needed to donate your time and your money, because my parents both do that, Um, but combined with the fact that in a smaller community where you feel the linkages more keenly when you have to watch what you say because (laughs) you never really know who's related to who, um, you can also... (laughs) You can also see pretty quickly that if you do something that's kind or giving or or beneficial for the community, people are going to notice it, they're going to remember you, they're going to maybe refer some client or a friend or a family member to your business because they think, oh, yeah, no, there's somebody that, you know, you'd like to work with because they're a a good person. So, And most of my best friends are people that I have met through my volunteering. So, you know, I really can't say this is uh, so... So we're looking for it's not just all giving. It, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of great things that come out of it. That I, I think people who don't want to step outside of their house in the evening, they go home and they go inside and they don't. 
go back out again. They just have no idea what they're missing. But not everybody's outgoing either, so I understand. You know, I, I was uh, I was at uh, Girl Scouts last week with my daughter, and they had some sort of bike safety, and all the dads were out. It was, you know, mm-hmm. you know, last year it was a tea party, and the dads are invited out to Girl Guides. And I, and I see my son at Cub Scouts, and I look at these guys, and I'm not a leader in this. It's not one of the ways I give back. Mm-hmm. And I just think about the, the, the uh, you know, it's clearly they have a good time and they have fun, but, you know, what we don't see as parents, and certainly what the kids don't see is all the prep, all the stress, <laughs> the putting together, the emails, the photocopying of maps to get them to the camping trip on time and so on. It's just, it's, it's, it's huge. And I've got a huge amount of respect for people who are, who are involved in this, this kind of work. And yeah, I'm, my fiance thinks I'm a little insane because he does see a lot of the prep that goes on and the time on the weekend that I'm, you know, at, at the computer getting some things ready. But, you know, I've, I've allowed myself to be yep. sucked in, sure. and, yep. and, and you don't have to be. You know, the, you can't just say, I am going to be on one board, period. And that's great. It's better than a lot of people are doing. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, yeah. And, and there aren't a lot of um, professionals, accounting, lawyers, doctors, who do get involved. I mean, we are the minority. We have all of these. We've been blessed with brains, and we've been blessed with the ability to do things, uh, run our own businesses, make decent money, you know, c- give back if we could. And I'm, I'm kind of dismayed how difficult it is for boards to find people with uh, those kinds of skill sets to help them through some of their problems. You know, it's really, you know, I've at the risk of, of again offending you on another in another way, but note <laughs> the smile and the tone of my voice as I say this. I've been on a fair amount of boards. Now, most of the boards I sit on are nonprofit, and they seem to attract a certain kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so apparently we see eye to eye on this one, Gwyneth. But, but, and, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a negative thing. And, and, you know, somebody once said to me that you need three W's. Sorry, three W's of, of board, a good board member are wealth, wisdom, and work, and you need two out of those three. Yeah. And I think there's a ton of truth in that. And unfortunately, most people, it seems to me, that I hang out with on boards want to talk. They want to share their wisdom, their experience. But when it actually comes down to rolling up the sleeves, getting their hands dirty, a little tougher to get them engaged. Well, yeah, that that does happen. What it really requires is a decent, uh, you need a good seed. You know, it's not at least one person on the board who is a strong leader doesn't have to be the president but is a tr- strong leader and then that person attracts another strong mm-hmm. person and mm-hmm. you get yeah it, it's hard some some boards seem to be just doomed they, they, they're constantly getting people who are either all talk no action or they they want to work hard but they don't really have a whole lot of skills and right. and just getting that balance between well those three is is really a difficult thing because we hang around with people who are similar to ourselves right. and so we're right. more comfortable volunteering next to somebody who's similar and so you can end up with a, a really skewed group if you're if you're not careful um I want to ask you about the the um, the, the juggling of of a, uh, an eclectic. I mean, you got a real eclectic approach. There's no question. But before we do that, Nelson Henderson, according to Wikipedia, was a second generation farmer in the Swan River Valley region of Manitoba, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he is quoted in "Under Whose Shade." It's a poem, I guess. Oh. Um, 1982. But you know what? Hey. It wouldn't surprise me if he still swiped it from the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, T.S. Eliot said every poet was a thief, so there you go. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, very did. It. So how do you keep it all in balance? And, you know, I mean, I've often, as a philosopher, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this idea of, you know, uh, um, the dialectics, you know, uh, pros and cons, push and pull and so on, and I've always thought the idea of balance is not a good thing because it sort of promotes this, you know, mediocrity, frankly. It's yeah, so the fact all. that I'm usually not uh, balanced is a good thing, you think I'm? <laughs> yeah, maybe not as an accountant. I am off kilter. Well, <laughs> we don't There's want that on your business card. <laughs> I have a tough time balancing the books. Is not going to be your tagline for your uh, <laughs> no for your. Company. I don't use that one. Am I? <laughs> no, but, but seriously, in the rest of my I, life occasionally I am running. I must admit. Now, thank yeah. God for a BlackBerry because at least it keeps. Yeah. Hey, I'm a fellow BlackBerry user. That's yeah, awesome. There you go. There's yeah. only a few of us left. I know it's sad, um, but uh, that really does help. Um, and I have some good people around me. I yeah. have good staff, and I have a great business partner, and I have a fantastic life partner. So I mean, you know, yep. those yep. help. But there, am I? Am I occasionally? 
uh, dropping balls? Oh, sure. But um, I do try my best, and most of the time I seem to be able to keep on top of things. Um, and, and, yeah, I just try to do a little bit of uh, as much as I can, and, and sometimes I, I will be very strategic about when, like if somebody comes to me and says, can you do this? And I'll say, okay, when's your busy time? Right. And if their busy time is March and April, then the answer is no. Right. Right. Um, United Way, their campaign's in the fall. That's a fairly typically quiet period for the accounting firm. I can handle that. So, you know, I have to be careful about what I take on. Are you Are you a good delegator? I would say I am, yeah. yeah really. I, that, that's something, I'm 51, and that's something I would say I've only managed to get better at in the last half a dozen years or so. Before that, I, I never felt I had the authority or the right but oh interesting as i've gotten older I, i'm getting better at did it did you ever did you ever have uh, an issue with uh you know i'm the only one who's going to be able to do this job therefore i can't delegate <laughs> lots of times <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but sometimes it just takes so long to show somebody oh my goodness but, uh-huh it's true but i think it comes you know this idea of support's huge it seems to mm-hmm. me and any good leader that i've spoken to over the years uh, or read i think speaks a great deal about life partner uh mm-hmm. and, and about uh, the the having you know somebody once said to me you know you got to hire great people don't just hire good people and that's it's tough. Like uh, one of the things I found out, where you know, working in the nonprofit sector, it's tough to hire great people because they cost money, right. and they're already hired mm-hmm. often. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so I would think in the corporate sector, it's a little easier, but still, it's tough to find. It's tough to surround yourself with the right people who, who, who give and take. No, absolutely, but very, very necessary. What do you do to recharge? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just have. Volunteer? I don't seem. Pardon me. Volunteer? Is that where you get <laughs> it your? It seems like it. Yeah. I mean, no, it kind of does actually. Yeah, I and mean, that's kind of what makes my heart sing. Cool. I do every every now and then. I do other things. There there will be a day where I'll just sit and read trashy novels for the day. <laughs> um, I've, I haven't done that in a while, but I remember not too long ago I did that. Um, I'll sit and play solitaire for you know a couple hours and. Or I'll go outside, go for a walk. I work out usually uh, three, three or four times a week, so I, that's, that helps me a lot. I find you really do have to keep physically in decent shape if you want to mentally be sharp. Um, right now I'm teaching myself Spanish. But, you know, I mean, that's just, everybody's got their own thing that you got to do to just kind of have some downtime. My, my partner, my fiancé, and I, we, we play uh, crib for money. <laughs> oh, that's <pretty> <laughs> We usually have a crib game every night. Yeah, we have. Oh, that's a, every night. Uh, you guys bank. have a bit of a problem, I think. No, no, it's great. For money. We play for money. We put it in a piggy bank, and it becomes our travel fund. That's pretty fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really wise move. I like it a lot. I mean, the fact that you may have a gambling addiction will have to deal with <laughs> another time, Gwyneth. But, uh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's really great. Yeah. So, so... I want to talk a little bit about our numbers t- the key to the universe is mathematics the key to the universe you know <laughs> somebody who deals I think in so. <laughs> somebody who deals in numbers i mean you you know it's so you've got a, you've got a little bit of this paradox thing going on here because for somebody who's so sort of um hmm what's the word i'm looking for uh delineated how's that mm. you seem to be pretty relational in your approach i know i'm i'm weird that way <laughs> Left and right brain seem to be pretty tightly tied together. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, there's no doubt about it. A good head for numbers is pretty much important for everything. Um, but if that's all you know how to do, you're not much use. Um, and so then you've got to surround yourself with people who have those other skill sets, like, you know, the marketing and the um, salesy kind of stuff and the, and the leadership skills and things like that. So, But to have, I mean, I've had, I've got to admit, a few lovely people come in who have great ideas like they're just fantastic entrepreneurial uh they've they've got lots of passion lots of energy cannot wrap their head around the numbers at all Mm. and you know that's fine as long as you recognize that's a shortfall and you hire somebody to help you with that and if if you perceive persist in these lovely schemes and never try to track down whether or not you're going to make any money at it you've got a problem 
So, I mean, it, it, it's just, just, I don't know. It's like everything. And you've got to have balance. You've got to have a bit of the numbers and a bit of the entrepreneurial, in, you know, initiative. Uh, you've got to have a little bit of innovation, but a salesmanship. And if you don't, then recognize that and find somebody to partner with who can help you in the areas you're lacking in. I am not actually very organized. Hmm. I'm not bad, but I'm not really a great administrator, so... I have people who help me with that because I need them to do that. Yeah, yeah. You would think somebody who is good with numbers would be a good good administrator just because there's this. Yeah, but I hate paper. You hate paper. (laughs) Interesting. I'm bizarre. (laughs) So your file folders are a complete mess, are they? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, if I if I it's more of a time thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. If I have the time, I'll organize everything within an inch of its life. But sure. I usually am running too much to take the time. Well, I wonder, and I wonder to what degree that's that's uh, your creative side coming out, your artistic side coming mm-hmm. out, and saying, you know what? I mean, if for me, there are about a, a hundred and one things I'd rather do than 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 file. I think that's exactly it. And and, and I think all of them are better than filing. <laughs> And yet, when I do it, I realize, wow, this probably could save me time in the future exactly. when I'm looking for that one quote or when I'm looking for that one sheet or whatever the case it might be. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I certainly justify it that way. I say, hey, there's way better things to be doing with my time than exactly. you know, washing a car. Yeah, yeah, I just go through the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think it comes back to some degree to this whole idea of support mechanism. You know, don't, don't, don't good leaders recognize their own weaknesses, and surround mm-hmm. them with people who can fill those in and challenge them accordingly. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel so. And that's why I've had such a great year on the board of directors at the Women's Business Network, because they are such a great group of gals, and they all have their different skill sets, and they all are willing to share them and step in. And so when I say, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm completely swamped, can you help? Like, no problem, got it. I'm running with it, or more often than not, it's like I don't even have to say anything, and they'll say, I'm taking that because you're you're probably busy, or I'll suddenly get these emails in my inbox, and they'll say, yeah, I already took care of that. Don't worry about it. It's like, oh, thank God. Right. (laughs) So it's been wonderful. I mean, just a wonderful so tell me, so tell me about that. I'm, I'm going to be coming out to uh, speak at uh, your event on June the third, which we can shamelessly promote right now. Um, <laughs> I think there's going to be a dinner. It's the last uh, yeah. night for you, isn't it? In twenty, it's, well, not twenty fifteen. Yeah, it's our last one in our fourteen fifteen season. Yeah. Uh, so, so what does the WBN do? I mean, it sounds to me like there's uh, the Women's Business Network is not just Peterborough. It's kind of a Oh, actually, no, it is. It's just Peterborough. It is just there, Peterborough. It is. Oh, fascinating. There, okay. Yeah, there are women's business networks. Yeah, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, in, ma- in many, many cities. But this particular mm-hmm. one is not associated with any other okay. group or anything. Okay, okay. And um, so it, it was created over 50 years ago, and the whole point of it was that they would help other women in business making sure that they support each other, promote each other, you know, teach each other things that they've learned. So uh, we have speakers come in and, you know, on all sorts of different topics. And we always have dinner and there's lots of chatter and everybody kind of gets to know each other. We have a forced uh, networking system. When you when you arrive as a member or a guest, you are given uh, or you pull out of a, a bag what your table number is. Okay. You don't get to sit with your cronies and just sit there and yak all the time. Right. With, yeah, so that that has helped. We also, for anybody who's new, if they want to, we'll set them up with somebody who will, you know, just kind of be their buddy, for want of a better word, for the evening and make sure that they get introduced to other people. Where does the whole idea? It sounds to me like you've got kind of an informal mentoring system in place, but mm-hmm. where does where does that play in? Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an electrician. I did 8,500 hours as an apprentice, so I, mm-hmm. I know the value of working alongside somebody who's an expert. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys uh, um, sort of formally set that up? I mean, you got force networking. We do. We do have that. We have the buddy system. We have uh, you know the chance to be introduced to other people who might help your business or at least provide your business with customers. We haven't really gone into a formal net, uh, mentoring uh, system. It's been bandied about, but mm-hmm. I don't think we really have enough people. Right. And and then one of the things we run into problems is that all of us are so busy yeah. running our own business that we yeah. don't have a lot of extra time to give away. So, uh, you know, there's there's a limit to how much we're going to be able to get that program working. But uh, we, I think we do a pretty good job of making sure that a new female entrepreneur or manager or employee in a relatively new business in town 
gets a chance to connect with other neat women that might be able to help them. So this is so you guys meet. This is this is not just about camaraderie and commiseration. It's about uh, connecting with others of like mind. It's about actual business opportunities. Well, absolutely. And then the speakers are. Uh, we've we've tried to very much focus the speakers into skills and and direction and and guidance in terms of how to run your business or your department. Um, not everybody in the WBN has to own a business. They can just uh-huh. be teachers or employees. Um, but the speakers are also there to help, you know, share some sure. ideas, yep. skills, and things. Yeah. So 50 years ago, you started this in Peterborough. Do you think the need then was greater than it is today? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, really, I mean, I guess there is still pockets and there are still areas where women just do not get a fair shake. But for the most part, uh, maybe I've just had a charmed life, but I haven't really run across it too much. And I think that the WBN the need for something like that has really diminished over those 50 years, but do we still like having it? Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's wonderful. I mean, we really do enjoy ourselves, and, and, and women do network differently than men, and so there's no reason why we shouldn't have a group that's just for women any more than there's any reason for there to be a group just for men, because sometimes you just feel more comfortable with people who you understand and can really mm-hmm. do better. But there's also, you know, the Chamber of Commerce where everybody mixes, so that's fine. Um, but we do, and we have a good time at the WBN, and I think it does help some women who are a little nervous about getting started and doing that networking to kind of get that first, get past that first fear, and then they can move on to other groups if they. they it, seems, it seems to me part of the reason why uh, a group like WBN is not maybe as necessary as it is today is precisely because it existed in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> you, the work that organizations and groups and, uh, and committed women like you uh, have done over the years is, is, has changed. The There's been a cultural shift as a result of it. To some degree, right? It's. I mean, that for me is what's exciting about all this work that I do. This whole idea of social change, I mean, comes out of, you know, uh, in, incremental steps, little things making a big difference. And I'm not suggesting for a second the WBN is a little thing, but in the bigger picture, it's one of the stones, right? It that, is absolutely. That you, that you can drop into the pond. What do you guys do to 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 avoid becoming the old women's club, like <laughs> the old boys' clubs of uh, that that we all know about? Well, I mean, I can't do much about the... Uh, well, the old part of me, I don't like that. <laughs> That's right. Rephrase that. I don't think it has anything to do with age, no, though, I, I really don't. But, but in a way, it did, like the old boys. I guess it did at one definitely, time. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And and that, I think, has even... It, it was a problem when I first moved to Peterborough, having that old boys club that just seemed to shut out everything else. But you're right that it could... We have we do have a risk of that happening. And so what we've been trying to do is, is um, reach out to younger women and get some of the young women coming out of the Trent Business Program and out of Fleming to join in. And uh, we have a member of our board who's on the um, association, Trent Business Students Association, yeah. Uh, so it, you know, they've been trying to do some linkages um, to younger people. Can't do much about the non-women part. Right, um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but we can at you least... You have to go through some serious rebranding. Yeah, yeah. We can at least avoid the old part and make sure that we bring in other generations you know, we do have a, a real skew towards older women in our membership, and that's precisely back, you know, cycling back to when I was younger and I had small children. I couldn't always get away to go to right. meetings like this, and so it's almost unavoidable, but we try to make sure that we reach out to the younger women as well because, you know, really it is only one Wednesday a month, and so yeah. surely they can escape that just to, well, I wonder to you know to go to my earlier question about the whole idea of recharging. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I know that when I uh, get with a group of philosophers, and I know that not too many people would get excited about that, but <clears throat> no. um, when I do, <laughs> to, you know, talk about an issue or there's a, a speaker, there's t- two nights a year I go to hear about Soren Kierkegaard at the U- University of Toronto with about 15 or 20 other people. I come out lit. You know, oh, absolutely. you're energized, right? Because yeah. you're 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 hanging out with people of like mind, and I mean that that seems to me to be a, a Pretty pretty serious value add. Yeah, and and I think that does happen. Maybe not every night, not right. every person. Right. Um, but uh, you know, the, depending on what table you sit at, depending yeah. on who the speaker is, I think sometimes you, we do walk away thinking, "Oh, that just made me feel so much better," and kind of, as you say, recharged. Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that happens. 
we're probably going to have to wrap up here in a second, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this phrase. You know the you know the phrase, and uh, it's all about relationships. I mean, I think on some level it's kind of trite, and I think that uh, I really do think it's been reduced to just. And I don't even know that many all of us do this well, but re, you know, returning phone calls and returning emails that's that's about that's about building relationships. But mm-hmm. it sounds like the Women's Business Network, 50 years in the making, you guys got something else going on there. Can you comment on that? I mean, it's clearly you've, you know, you've said earlier you've got some of your best friends you've met. Oh, absolutely. Through your through your volunteer work. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, it's not just Women's Business Network, obviously, where I've made connections, sure. but uh, the Women's Business Network, I think, is a really great place for a woman who just is feeling like they really wish that they had a chance to talk about an issue maybe they're having at work or, or a way to enlarge the market, but they're not really sure how to go about it. Or the, Yeah, the, I, I really think it's a great place for a businesswoman to find herself and, and make those connections, stay for a few years, and then maybe move on to something else. But it's a... I think we've done a tremendously good job of making people feel welcome and important and empowered and that... Uh, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't carry on for another 50 years. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up there today, Gwyneth. If if, uh, if you're okay with that, I really really appreciate you uh, spending some time chatting with me about. Uh, we covered we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we did. Very, oh, it was my pleasure. In a very short period of time. Uh, so it's the um, Women's Bez- Business Network. That's the Women's Business Network, as it's spelled. Dot net. Um, yeah. That's of Peterborough. And uh, Gwyneth James, who works with Cody and James, uh, general accountants, that's Cody, C-O-D-Y, and G, uh, J-A-M-E-S dot C-A, Cody and James in Peterborough. And she's been our guest today. And, hey, uh, you know what? I meant to pull up the – there we go. Here we go. Nelson Henderson, quote, the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade – you do not expect to sit, close quote. And we're going to end this uh, because uh, Gwyneth and I actually believe this was stolen from a, um, was it a Greek poet? Uh, Greek Gwyneth? proverb is what I Greek would... proverb, yeah. there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for joining us today. You're very welcome. Look forward to meeting you in June.